Kate Richards, Midas Man, Hostar and Credence down the outside, but Captain Harry at the 100 goes for home, puts up a length, Kate Richards and Hostar and Captain Harry, Captain Harry won it. Good morning, welcome to ATB TV for this week. Uh, what a great bit of vision that was. Captain Harry getting the job done at Sandown on Wednesday. Um, terrific little ride from Jess Eaton who's uh, got a good affinity with this horse now and Mitch Friedman absolutely flying, doing a great job with uh, ATB horses. I think that's his fifth winner uh, for us uh, over the last few months. So fantastic result. Uh, well done to the Giroux family and the other co-owners. Uh, obviously races in there family colours and um, having the mare Queen Era um, and breeding one and getting it all the way to the races and winning a uh, midweek city race is always a, a thrilling result, uh, a great effort um, obviously in conjunction with Darren and Liz there at the farm, um, yeah like I said to breed one, get one to the races and then be winning uh, Light Mum Queen Era, she was a 1600 metre winner at Sandan back in her racing days with Weary and uh, for Captain Harry to get that job now and record his fifth career win, uh, three this preparation, uh, just a wonderful result for all involved. Um, this week's edition is going to be a bit mixed and varied, uh, a little less uh, of me and obviously I'm flying solo so none of the boss at all. Um, we'll have a little bit of jockey, trainer, pre, post race contribution just for a lot of the new owners out here, it's a little bit of what we feed out um, to all owners in horses. So if you, you haven't had a horse that race, has raced yet and it's with us, uh, some of what you'll see today um, is what you'll get when your horse gets to the racetrack. So we'll work it that way. We'll go back over our runners um, for the week and, like I said, contributions from um, Varied. I even chased a jockey down the car park yesterday to get his thoughts on one of the the runners and obviously um, some pre-race thoughts on our runners coming up over the weekend. It's been wet and miserable the last 24 hours so uh, with a few meetings there could be doubts on whether they go ahead and uh, with that said if they do there could be doubts on some of our horses racing but we'll, we'll know all that in the next 24 to 48 hours but um, sit back just have a listen to our contributors for this week. Uh, I'll pop my head back in with a few where I haven't been able to catch up with the uh, the connected um, stable representatives but um, hopefully uh, it's enjoyable and you can maybe find a winner from what you uh, hear over the next 15 minutes or so. Robbie Griffiths, Igniter. Um, things went out the window at the start with this bloke on Saturday. Unfortunately Pete they did and he cut his hind leg. Probably did it then coming out of the barriers. It was quite, it was quite sore and he's still sore on it and um, it certainly took away his, uh, his talent on the day and I think that he, you know, he could have easily been very competitive had our game plan had come off. But anyway, those things happen. We're just patching him up still. Um, he's still in bandages and on some antibiotics. As soon as that wound's right, he'll be heading to the paddock and uh, have a rest and come back in the drier time of the year when he gets conditions to suit him. Serious suspect. What a great run on the weekend once again. Finished fourth, should have finished third. Uh, the second horse ridden by Damien Oliver just uh, tightened. Linda up late, she just had to sort of check and it just cost us running third but his uh, form continues to be very good down the straight. Um, that was a race that was controversially uh, won by the winner that actually burst the gates open early but I think the right decision was made, he never gained an advantage and while it looked like he did, uh, he was then back on his haunches and sort of at the back. So all credit to the winner. Uh, fantastic run by Sirius Suspect, denied another listed placing, but racing in great heart. And we look forward to July the 20th back to his grade, a benchmark 78, albeit Karen 60, down the straight 1200. Uh, so I'm just going to work out whether we go with Brad with 60 kilos or claim like we did with Ethan Brown back in the spring. Uh, either either horse is going uh, fantastic and hopefully we can get a win uh, at his next time going around. I tried to speak to Joan, uh, actually I went to speak to Joan Ivel uh, about him at Sandown yesterday but 
I had to get permission from Racing.com, which I now have got permission to speak about him. So I'm going to catch up with Jane on Saturday and uh, just have a chat about Serious Suspect and a few of our other horses and um, just get a little bit of an insight on what, to, what she looks for on race day in the mounting yard. So we'll have that next week um, with ATB TV. So I look forward to that. Dean Yandel, um, just calling in the sand and hit and run visit, Dean. One ride, one winner, that's the way to do it. If you're only going to come for one ride. It'd be good if you could do that every day of the week. Yeah. Um, just with our addition of ATB TV, you rode collectible on Saturday and she yep. was a really nice third. Yep. Um, look, the, the barrier sort of didn't do any justice being down, drawn down inside. You know, it, was, it didn't allow it to be where you wanted to be. You know, feeding out to the middle part of the track, but just had to deal with what I was dealt with. She ran really well. She sold really good off a nice gallop, I thought. Um, she was really solid through the line, and I, as I suggested that, I think on the day she probably suited a little bit further as well, um, which no doubt Robbie's sort of looking forward to. Um, and find the right race, um, she should have a forward, another forward showing, I reckon. She's always shown us she's got a bit of class, so I think out to 2000, obviously the further you get out, the well, so much easier they are to win, but it'll certainly suit this filly. Yeah, obviously, um, yeah, it does It does sort the ones out that can't stay those sort yep. of trips, so, and, and being when they are young, young horses, uh, it does pull them up quite quickly. Excellent, thanks mate. No um, it's been a while since you rode an ATV winner, do you know which one it was and when it was? It's got significance. It's got significance. What, do you own it? Uh, Beck's got a little part in it. Oh, at uh, Geelong. French I think. Fizz? Yeah, Geelong, that's right, yeah. That was where his last winner. Yep, there you go. So hopefully, not too long, he'll be back winning in the ATB colours. That'd be good. Thanks, Dana. Alright, get out of your car. Grant some money. Jared coming back, just take us through the run, though. Yeah, it worked out nice. Sort of ended up in a nice trailing position coming into the straight. Just when they quicken from the 600, just was left a little bit flat footed, so just sort of nursed the horse, like sort of try and help it through it till it could hit the line. The horse inside us on the corner was just a, a, yeah, just a bit of a bit of a pest, just wanting to come out. So it was going to take too much out of our horse, so just come out a little bit more, and then the horse was able to build momentum and hit the line quite strongly. So after this run today, obviously going back up in trip will suit, I think. But yeah, it was really good to see it hit the line, especially. With, I just thought I had to help it from the 600 because it just come off the bridle when they were a bit slick, um, but it was really strong along. Captain Harry, a winner. Midweek City winner. So well done to everyone out there. Obviously nice when it's a homebred as well. Smile on down at Lizard's place. Great ride from Jess. I think he went around a horse. Obviously we'll catch this interview on racing.com. Try and keep the wind out of the microphone. Probably the ride of the day so far, Jess. Congratulations. We'll just speak in a mid set. He said that you came up with a little bit of a plan. You've executed it perfectly. Yeah, look, um, the horse can and enormous going to the gate, so had a lot of confidence while probably blending into it. It wasn't the best part of the track, but we, we got out right and I just had to trust Mitch's training and the horse's ability and he's too good. How confident were you when you're out the back that you were going to have that turn of foot with safe in the ground? Really good result there, guys. Um, the way we sort of walked the track, the inside was quite good. Um, just for the 600, we wanted to edge off. It worked out that way. Um, also really strong through the line, getting that little claim and getting up in the grade just a little bit. Um, obviously, he's going really well. He handles the wet ground, so we'll try and keep keep him going for the uh, winter prep. Beautiful. Thanks, Mitch. Rob, just with Dentara, a bit of post-race chat with Jai, suggesting that she might have a real shifty surface here today. Yeah, yeah, sorry guys, I wasn't on the first video, the hazards of having two in the one race, but Michael D on the stable mate and Jai both reported that the track was quite loose. Um, when the track's loose, and here they've had 11 meetings or 12 meetings in the, every Wednesday, 
and you, a lot of the horses are running on old divots, even though they moved the rail out and put it on hillside, the, the jockeys are using the whole track, so the horses are running on a loose surface. And it, it can be hard for owners to understand why Dentara handled the nine at Maui and didn't really like the six today, and that's because of the wear and tear of the track. Maui hadn't had a Matt Kamani, we stand here at a cold, wet Ballarat and we're probably going to get the same conditions at Geelong tomorrow and obviously we found a nice race for Serious Deal but uh, yeah, if, we, if the races go ahead for a start it's probably a real question mark with him on that surface. It is, yeah, I mean we'll have to see what happens uh, for the next 12 hours but um, uh, it, is, it would be a bit of a shame I think running him on a heavy 10. Uh, equally it might be something that he likes and uh, uh, I think probably would have to let him uh, take his chance, just given the, the race type, um, the distance, and, and uh, the fact that he's in really good shape himself. Um, if they call it off, or, or we think it's uh, too extreme a, a ground condition, um, I'll have a chat to Darren about it, but um, uh, there are some other options, but it probably means we're going to be looking at running him in benchmark races, yeah. which is a bit of a shame. I'd like to keep him to maiden grade, but there just aren't many uh, options around. Um, I think to wait for a maiden, there's 2,500 at Bendigo right at the end of July, uh, which, uh, which could be an option, but uh, he does need a little bit of racing, and uh, there's a 2,200 at Pakenham, which is probably uh, not a bad option, but it is a, is a benchmark 58. Uh, but the horse is really well, I'm happy with him, and uh, just um, waiting for all the stars to align, if you like, all the conditions to be right, and, and he'll get a win and then hopefully string a couple together. Terrific, thanks Matt. We'll just. Uh see what happens with mother nature and we'll see we might have to make the call ourselves in the morning just depends on what happens in the next 24 hours weather wise exactly yeah great thanks matt all right robbie uh lady mcphee goes to geelong in a class one 1300 obviously it was a uh no go her last run she just never got a crack at him probably should have ran second with any luck yeah michael d thought she should have ran second uh it was just one of those days you just got to forget she She's not the luckiest of horses, unfortunately, and, and that was evident last start. We had planned to originally run her in the 64-15, the last race on the program at Geelong, but there was uh, 25 acceptances or something, so she was balloted out, whereas the field limit in the Class 1 was 16, so she was guaranteed to run with 12 runners in that race. So it's a Class 1 13. It's a similar race to the race of Warrnambool, and she ran really well in that race when Jared Fryer rode her. So she's got the talent to be competitive on uh, Friday, definitely, but she just needs a bit of luck. And I know we've been saying that for a while, but if she gets the brakes, I'm sure she can be competitive. We don't know the weather, but it looks like it could cut up a bit rough, but the bigger Geelong track um, probably suits her a bit too. Yeah, spot on, Pete. The bigger Geelong track should suit her, uh, whereas Cranbourne, even though she's won there, we thought we'd try and emulate all of those things, but it didn't work and she got into traffic and never got clear crack at them, whereas the big track at Warrnambool, she was good and, she was, uh, and Geelong, she should get a clear crack at them there. It's heavy nine already and there's a bit of bad rain, weather or bad at the moment, so uh, I think it'll maintain her that, that, that rating and she handles that fine. Fingers crossed we get a bit of luck. Oh, yeah, that's what we need. Angel, last Rob, uh, I don't know who's drawing these barriers, but we go to Caulfield in a 1400 metre, uh, it's an open three year old I think it is, for the gate, 13 or 14, makes yeah. it a little tricky. It's incredible, I wish you got barriers in, uh, in alphabetical order, we'd be right, we'd be <laughs> getting barrier one all the time, but uh, unfortunately she's always drawing bad barriers and it's really frustrating because she was really good last start, but the wide barrier beat her, she was a sitting duck going forward. She got sort of too far back from the wide barrier that would start before, but both when Dean Yendall Rader and Brett Preble suggested getting her at the 1400. It is a relatively com compressed um, you know, race program from the Caulfield Saturday race, quick back up to Sandown, then only 10 days, but she seems really well. And it is against the boys, and her real weight's probably 52 and a half, but on the minimum weight, it'll still help her size. And Dean's gonna need some luck from that barrier, Pete. You know, it, 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 I'd love to see her draw a barrier where she's not working so hard from the start. I suppose the only thing with the 14, the stretch from those 11 she's running on, we don't have to be as proactive early. Well, that's, that's the hope. Yeah. That's the hope. But I mean, bad barriers are it just, yeah. they're just bad, simple as that. But because you worry if you go forward, like, which we're going to have to do. Yeah. Um, which, and we did that last start, and she was great. But you're just a sitting duck to, to run second. Caulfield is a track that you can probably get away with it a little bit better than the long run in at Sandown. But anyway, uh, you, you know, look, she's really well, she's racing well. It is a bit of a tough task against the boys from the barrier, but it is what it is, so we'll just have to, you know, have a crack. Yeah, Dean's had a feel of us, I mean, 
He's been on her back, so... Um, He's been on the back. He's recommended this distance. Yeah. We're catering for it. Um, other than the barrier, we everything else is yeah. everything else is good. Um, just on another note, obviously it's been a little quieter here today at Sandown, apart from Matt Hill's voice over the top of us. But a notable absent too. Absolutely, absolutely. It's been peaceful, Pete, isn't it? Pleasurable day. Very pleasurable day. It's uh, not often you get a pleasurable day, and normally he's uh, he's bombing me with messages or text messages or advice or co-training. Uh, that he's good at, but uh, yeah, not often he, uh, he gives us any peace, that's for sure. I think I'm really about six foot four, but it's all the crap he puts on my shoulders that makes me five foot five. But anyway, uh, wherever he is, no doubt, he'll, he'll read, watch this and he'll be bombing me with more text messages. Goes so. out about 11 Friday morning, so I'll be turning my phone off then. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're at the right, I'm, I'm at Caulfield on Saturday too, so there's another D dance free day. He'll find me, he'll find me, whether it's a text message, an email, he'll get a hold of me, he'll send a pigeon or something, but he'll get me. Thanks, Rob. Good on you, Pete. Crack the code, who was down the run in the Sir John Monash uh, stakes on Saturday. Uh, it's gonna be safe for another day. Uh, she'll go to Flemington Saturday week. Um, Mick Price, just a few little things, probably added up to too many neg negatives. Um, uh, the weight scale, um, relation to a three-year-old uh, compared to the older horses, fairly compressed the weights and we weren't getting too much of an advantage there. It is a strong addition, um, sometimes the race falls away, sometimes it doesn't and uh, just from the gate and the form of some really good honest uh, older sprinters, Mick just thinking it might be a bit easier task to go to a benchmark 90 uh, at Flemington in uh, as I said, Saturday week. So uh, crack the card will be scratched and uh, we look forward to heading to Flemington on July 20th. She goes boom, runs tomorrow at Mackay. Uh, been disappointing since transferring from Gala to John Manselman. But in saying that, uh, John did state that uh, tomorrow's race was the target race. It was the cutest race. Uh, last start at Mackay was sort of the, uh, the lead up uh, fitness run for it. She still was disappointing. Um, I'm not too sure the jockey was over aggressive late on her, uh, whether she just had enough or, or, or what, I'm not too sure. But uh, we'll just take it for John's word that this uh, this race is the target and um, hopefully she can run well. I think uh, win, lose or draw, um, we're probably nearly at the end of the road with She Goes Boom. So let's hope uh, we can get a result for all the owners out there. Oh, we've got Periscope, uh, typically of ATB at the moment. We draw anything inside 15, it's a miracle. He's drawn the outside, but just speaking off camera, we're there to kick him off. And um, Yeah. Um, look, I, I sort of would have really liked to start him over a mile, and um, uh, given the weather conditions and what tracks are available at the moment, it's, it's going to be taxing. Um, uh, look, he's not a fan of the wet going, but I reckon it's ideal. We're ready, we're ready to kick off. Um, let's send him around, um, let him send, and see where he's at. You know, he's uh, he's ready to go to the races. Big track at Bendigo. Just um, let him be comfortable and work to the line. I suppose that's the yeah, go, isn't it? Yeah, we won't. We'll keep it pretty simple. Um, we'll, we'll keep him together on the on the go, and he's not a fan of it. And uh, let him down late and, and see where he ends up. Excellent. Well, we look forward to. Uh, Kicking off with um, promising star Periscope. Yeah, look, he's going really nice, and he, he's a real good, honest horse. So I've got no doubt he'll go to the races. Um, he'll deceive you. You will think he likes a wet track, um, but he, he doesn't at all. He's just honest. Yep. Thanks, mate. My shiny choice. Uh, just spoke to Matty Williams. Uh, real doubt on him running. Draw gate 19. Um, almost makes it impossible. He is a roll forward horse, but. Uh, with so many horses inside you, uh, you're not guaranteed to get to where you want to. So, uh, may just uh, wait for another day. Matthew will have a look at the calendar, and uh, uh, the only little positive by missing uh, that run at Bendigo it just gives another week or so um, just to really freshen the horse up. Obviously, seen it going really, really well off of freshen. So, uh, Iris will know in the next 24 hours, but uh, doubtful start on my shiny choice on Sunday at Benigo. Hi everyone, accepted with the right your name this morning for Bendigo, drew well, 6 of 20, 
um, big field, so we're uh, we're blessed with that. Jamie Mod on board, he's in good form. Happy with him. Um, track at the moment is heavy eight. Um, ideally, you would like it just to stay like that. I don't think he's a heavy ten horse, um, and he's not a good three horse either. So, um, if the ground stayed there, that would be good. Um, his recent work's been very good. He's uh, he's tighter, he's fitter, um, and I'm very happy with him. Um, there's plenty of horses in the race with um, okay recent form, but we're just hoping our guy has a bit too much class for them. Um, it's uh, it's not an easy race, but we have got good city form, um, and hopefully uh, it can be his day on Sunday. This is David doing an update on safety pads. I know he's not winning, but geez, in good order. He's bouncing off the track, down to run next Tuesday. Hopefully he can break through. Um, he's really knocking on the door. I think there's got to be a jockey change and hopefully that's enough to get the win. All right, well, I'm gonna go, I, I think Captain Harry right can win. Yep. And I'll go collectible as my anchor. Close. Right, so I'm Igniter, the place, Ransom Money, the win, Darren's collectible, the place, so and Harry, the win. And is it for you? I'll just get on serious suspect.